get all my video productions here. Alrighty, so we got a happy Wednesday, uh, middle of June. Uh, my noon crew has, of course, been a little bit ahead from the week we had a couple weeks ago. Um, so today is uh, watch workout number 39, I believe it is. Um, we have a two minute timed workout the other day. And of course we have the nice, long, thorough warm up, and we have the, the uh, 10 rounds of two minutes of pushing and pulling and the 300 abs and core. So invasive, but also uh, uninvasive if you were, um, if you had variety. Uh, so uh, sometimes on workout weeks like this, because of what I'm going to give you, you might be like, oh, that was a little, we did that the other day, but that was kind of on you because of the choices we had. So, uh, again, uh, I don't want to blame anybody <laughs> by any means. Uh, it's the, uh, the variety is great. Sometimes it gets redundant. Uh, today, again, nice good warm up we're going to do. Um, we'll have a choice of a right side push pull round with our right glutes, hips. Uh, we'll have a left side. So, again, a little bit different, but uh, not like it's major right side and major left side per se. All right, we have our simple warm-up because I'm not worried about other things too much, okay? So this is one of our most basic warm-ups. We're gonna do our standing scissors, standing runners, jack the lanes. Then we're gonna lay on the ground and do two rounds of our scissors, runners, swimmers. And we're gonna get back up and do this one more time. So not really any leg stuff because we're gonna focus on our hips and glutes. Blah, 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 blah. When you're ready, 10 standing scissors. Ready, set. Go. Standing scissors, right the leg straight, arm straight, reach, posterior lengthening, anterior activating, hammies, glutes, lower back, and you can even add the shoulders and arms and calves and stuff in there on the 10 standing scissors. 10 standing runners, elbows to knees, not knees to nose, mobility of your hips, your knees, your joints, and good activation of your muscles and you have that rotation in there. Standing jack the legs. We have done these. This is a dynamic stretch. And you actually don't hear me use the word stretch very often. Yes, you are lengthening. This would be a static stretch. And the jack the lane is a dynamic stretch so you have the movement stretch on your 10 jack lanes we're then going to be on the ground and just so we don't have to get on and off the ground again we're going to do the two loops 10 scissors 10 runners 10 swimmers times two now you can do 20 20 20 times one i'm not going to be upset with that but i'm going to go scissors runners swimmers on my hands and knees and then i'm going to go scissors runners swimmers laying on my stomach so 10 scissors, the ab version, the other one, although there are some abs, is more of the hip balance dynamic motion. 10 scissors, 10 runners, runners again, mobility, this is more of the ab rotation activation version. 10 on your ab runners, and of course breathe and focus. Swimmers, I'm gonna go hands and knees this round. I'll lay on my stomach the next round. Now you guys all know the difference because we've talked about that so many times. This is mobility because there's more joint motion. You can say more of a good activation and you have some balance and coordination. Prone swimmers on your hands and knees. When we get to the next round, I'm gonna personally do laying on my stomach also called prone swimmers, and you can get more contraction. Anyhow, we're not in a hurry. 10 scissors again, 10 runners again, and then I'm gonna lay on my stomach. You don't have to make the change if you don't want to. So, kind of getting into it a little bit, it might feel like the pace of the warm up is quicker because we got rid of the other ones, the squats and the stationary lunges. 10 scissors, 10 runners, 10 swimmers, and then we'll stand up and do those standing ones one more time. We're not in a hurry. And of course, I'm not worried about warming up other joints and muscles because we don't really need them very much today. And again, laying on the stomach version, 
you're supposed to maintain motion. There's just less than the hands and knees. You can get more contraction because of the leverage of keeping one side on the ground. But it's always upper back, middle back, lower back, glutes, spine mobility, and muscle activation around your spine. Big deep breath, 10 standing scissors. We're gonna be done with these, or we started with them. We'll do our standing runners and our jack and lanes, and then we need to get to work. And by we, I do mean we. Hello there, Brian, how you doing, buddy? 10 standing scissors, right? We're not in a hurry. 10 standing runners, mobility. And of course, yes, there are some abs on the standing runners. There's more abs on the laying on the ground runners. Both of them have mobility. Jack the lanes, big, slow, dynamic stretching. More the other one, those are more they call dynamic motion. So dynamic motion, standing scissors, and standing runners. This is definitely dynamic stretching. <sighs> breathe, breathe, breathe. Feeling good. Working hard. We are going to do five sets of ten. And you can do right side stability push, which I'll show you, or right side balancing pull. So this week you've had some choices, and I do apologize for that. But also, based on the tools you have at home and what you've done this week, it's kind of helpful. So I'm going to show you both. Either stability, which I'll show you right side push, or you can balance and do the right side pull. We have five sets of 20 coming up. The combo, we're gonna do our right side hips, glutes, and that is gonna be a ladder. We're gonna go up in the ladder, you'll see here in a second. So here's your right side push. I can either have my hip bridge, right side push, and of course I can mix it up between single leg hip bridge. You can lay on a bench or ball, and I would like you to be unbalanced. So balancing or stability, right side pushing. You can lay on anything. I'm gonna lay on the ground. Or you can balance on your right side pull and you can mix it up. So the circuit is right side pushing or pulling, balance or stability. I'm gonna be here, right? Your right side hip glutes, and I'll, be, I'll show you when we get there, is either donkey kicks or fire hydrants. And we're gonna go up by 10, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. You'll see here in a second. Ready? I'm gonna start with a right side balancing row. Ready, set, go. So we have five sets of 20. Now I don't really want you to change it in your set, but you could. Right, you could do a little bit of a push and a little bit of a pull. I'd rather you mix up the balance during your set on the right side pull, but your stability on the push, and we've done these things, right, on completely separate workouts. Today, you have a choice of doing them in the circuit. Stability push, whether you're on the ground in a hip bridge position, or you're laying on a ball, a stability ball, or you're laying on a bench and your feet are up and off the ground somehow, some way, so you're gonna get unbalanced, okay? Now we've done this, and then we've done it twice in our 14 weeks, but we've had them on two complete different workouts. Always 25 sets. You can either do fire hydrants or donkey kicks. You're only doing 10 this round, and then you're gonna get back on your stability or balance push-pull. It's gonna go up by 10, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So you'll eventually accumulate 150 total reps. Okay, so we're gonna feel this sucker. We always start a little bit slow and we always progress as we can. Round two, you don't have to mix it up. If you want to, I'm gonna dabble between both so you can see them. Right side stability or balance pushing. Ready, set, go. 
Now, I'm currently in a single leg hip bridge. You don't have to be. You could be in a double leg hip bridge. You could be on the bench or a ball, but I want you to get unbalanced or unstable so your body has to work on being stable and balanced. And you're pushing or pulling. You would have your balancing rows when you're pulling. You know, I'm talking a lot. It's not our first time. I don't have a lot of weight down here. Normally this would be a heavier type of a day, but it's always right side this circuit, whether you push or pull. I just want you to be unstable or unbalanced. That's only 10, right? Say it again. That's only 10 reps each time? Five sets of 20. Always 20 on your right side push or pull. Good question. Your hip glute is 10 round one, and now we're on our 20. That's gonna be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So our right side push or pull is always 20, and your right side hip glute is gonna be a ladder, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So each round gets longer, your right chest and back get more rest, maybe you have more weight. And of course at the gym, I'm gonna be able to control that. What I don't want you to do is go faster. We have 100 right side upper body and you have 150 right side hips glutes, okay? And again, if you were at the gym, you would have a lot of individual weights, a 35 pound dumbbell, a 40 pound dumbbell, a 50 pound dumbbell, a 20 pound dumbbell. So I would have heavy weights. Round three, balancing rows or stability push, always 20. Mix them up as you wish. Just like the other day, we have the five two-minute pushes and the five two-minute pulls. It could have been all upper body. It could have been no upper body. It could have been a little bit of each. And of course, you could have done all biceps. You could have done all shoulders. So today might feel completely different, or today you might be doing similar muscles. Kind of depends on what you chose the other day. And on Monday, turn my brain on, you have the right obliques, left obliques. We had our upper body and glute circuit, so there was lots of things coming your way. Of course, I loiter because 20 reps is about a minute of work. And of course, it depends on how unbalanced you got or how unstable you got and how much weight you got. <laughs> 30, round three on your hips, glutes. Again, it's either fire hydrants or donkey kicks. 30 reps, breathe and focus. 30, right side hips and glutes. You're doing both, posterior hips and glutes. 30. Right here watching. Take a big deep breath. Come back to it. So come back to try one more time. Breathe and focus. No rush. So we've done 10 round one on the hip glute, 20 round two on the hip glute, 30 round three on the hip glute. So that hip glute's gonna go up, 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 and I highly recommend mixing it up between fire hydrants and donkey kicks. But the right side push or pull is always 20. But I want heavy if it can be heavy, and I want you unbalanced or unstable if you can be unbalanced or unstable. Right side 20 for the fourth set. We have five sets. The pace might feel high because of the combos and compared to our last couple workouts, it is. Doing two minutes of things the other day, it felt long. So I can right side push or pull. I don't have very heavy weights, 
I wish that all of you guys had heavy weights so you could really feel how invasive this could be. A hundred slow, heavy, unbalanced, unstable reps is a very big difference than light. Not a bad thing, no complaints. Load would be awesome. And of course, shake it off. 40 on that right hip glute with intention. Slow it down, nice and big. Good old reps, but I want hips and glutes. 40, remember it's either donkey kicks, which is long, big, reaching behind you, or fire hydrants, get out. 40, either fire hydrants, or donkey kicks on the right side, please. <laughs> Breathe on those fire hydrants or donkey kicks, taking your time. Um, you got your posterior your hips, and in your posterior hips, you've got your glute minimus and glute medius. Now, they are glutes, but they're also part of the posterior hips. Your glute maximus is a big one, the squeezable one. And of course, mixing up your donkey kicks and fire hydrants, you might turn on the glute maximus, and that's the idea. When we do this on our posterior hips, I'm trying to get you to not get your glutes maximus. So it's kind of unfair, I'm asking you to do two things. If you have ankle weights, these things are great, but they can also hinder. You can also turn on your hamstrings and your quads. So I really am trying to get your hips and glutes. All right, I've loitered, hoping that everybody got their 40. It's your last round of your right push or pull, and then we have our last 50 on our right hip glute. Ready? Set, go. Now, you might be a little ahead. Slow down, do it right, maximize the motion. If it's super heavy, awesome. And if it's super light, awesome. Time under tension, slow it down. I don't need ridiculously slow five second reps. That's not the idea. But I don't want you doing quick reps because I want two and a half to three second reps. 20, right side, push or pull. Stability is a little more core. The stability ball you can lay on or sit on. The bench, you could change your feet, legs to be unstable and unbalanced. You would use your core. Balancing does turn on core, but it also requires other things. Your peroneus muscles like to turn on on balancing exercises. Everybody feels it a little differently on balancing exercises. Round five, if you're not there yet, cool. You're your 20, last 20, right push, pull, and then you're on your 50, last right hip glute. 50, and again, the pace should feel a little high. Now, shouldn't be huffy puffy high. We're not doing things quickly. You're doing them correctly. And the subtle changes will yield getting this circuit done, as opposed to the last couple workouts. Donkey kicks, up and back. I want your glute maximus as much as possible. Your glute minimus and medius are your upper outer glutes. You got your QLs back there. They really want to help out the posterior your hips. Right, you have a bunch of things going on that want to help out. And when we do our hip exercises, I want them. Today, I'm trying to get your hips and glutes. 50, right side. You've already done, what is it, 100 reps going into it, right? 10, 20, 30, 40. Finishing off with a nice 50 reps, right hip glutes. And of course you're focusing, you're breathing, you're working, you're playing, no rush. And of course you know we have to do the other side, but I'm gonna do some other things in the middle, right? Because I want you focused and breathing. 
When you are done and ready, make yourself comfortable on the ground. Now, time-wise, you probably shouldn't be done. However, it's not the hardest exercise in the world. I want big and slow and methodical, and I want your glutes. When you are ready, we're on to some abs. Now, is this magical? No. We're going to do 10 sit-ups, and then 10 sort of leg straight sit-ups. We're going to do knees bent sit-ups. We're going to do toe touches. We're going to do, we're, going to, we're just going to keep going up here, right? So 10 on the abs, we have a bunch of different 10s before we do the other side, okay? Legs straight down, when you're ready, 10 sit-ups. Now we've talked about verticality of motion when we did our pulling leg exercises. Now I want you to think about going up. Don't create momentum, right? I see a lot of this when people sit up. I want you to go up. Legs straight down, 10 sit-ups, and I want you to breathe through your abs and core. Breathe, only 10. Look at that vertical motion. When people get in, their back curves, right? Getting up, 10 legs straight down sit-ups. Now, when you bend your knees, you're losing a little bit of leverage, and people are like, hey, Chris, can you hold my feet? Or can you put something on my feet? No, use your butt, right? Keep your butt down on the ground. Now you'll lose a little bit of that verticality. You're gonna lose a little bit of leverage from your legs. So it's gonna feel harder on your knees bent sit-ups. But we grew up with people holding our feet or we put our feet under the couch. I want you to use your glutes to stay centered. And that's unfair. You've got mobility of spine, you have the flexibility of the posterior muscles, and you have your activation of your anterior muscles. Toe touches, legs up, toe touches. Breathe and breathe on those toe touches. And breathe on those toe touches. You have shortened a shortened muscle. You shorten your abs when you brought your legs up, and you're shortening your abs as you're reaching for your toes. Toe touches, we've done these things. But as you can tell, each workout I like to focus on something. Reverse crunches, now your legs can be perfectly straight. They can be slightly bent. Your legs can be crossed if you need to. Your hands can be under your buns like I have. But you can also isometrically contract your abs and do your reverse crunches, right? It's only 10. You're breathing through your abs and core for your 10 sit-ups, sorry, reverse crunches. And of course, we're slow and we're methodical. If you're beating me to the punchline, slow it down. 10 supermans, upper back, middle back, lower back glutes. It's less mobility than our swimmers. It's more contraction of the middle lower back. And again, maybe even some glutes. Upper back, middle back, lower back, glutes. Breathe and focus. So that was 60 reps. We're gonna do it again in the reversed order after the next circuit, right? So again, today feels like we're getting a lot of work done because of the diversity. Do I want you going faster? No, we're on the left side push or pull and the left side hip glute. Take your time, big deep breath, lots of work, and remember balancing, get unbalanced, and get your body to work so you're not unbalanced. Stability, get on something, lay on something, core, and then you gotta push on the stability or balance pull. Mix, and I know we're going quick. 20, left side, push or pull. If you're pulling, I want you to think balance, which does get other things, right? All these other things are working, and you've got some core, right? Can't deny activating your core, and there's a balance thing, right? If you're doing stability pushes, you're either on the ground in a hip bridge position, you're on the bench, feet off the ground somehow. We don't do that very often in the gym, we probably should feet up and off the ground, knees off the ground, feel ground, and we're laying on a stability ball. 20 on your left side, push or pull. And of course, that takes 
about a minute, depends on the weight you have in your hands and the position you put your body in. When you are done with a 20 stability push or pull, 10 either fire hydrants or donkey kicks on that left side. 10. And of course, I want to loiter a little bit to make sure everybody's here. We got out of those abs pretty quickly and got here. Only 10. And now you know why I wasn't super worried about the warm up because I'm going to get all these other things, right? We got a good warm up in, but we've also been able to kind of dabble and, and get there. All righty, round two. You can push or pull. You did it on the right side, so don't overthink it. You're now on the left side. Always 20. And yes, I've been mixing up single leg hip bridges, which isn't magical. I did do a little bit of a double leg hip bridge. You could lay on a bench or a ball, but I want you to be a little unbalanced, a little unstable if you're pushing. You're definitely unbalanced if you're pulling. Being in a hip bridge position just gives you a nice good chest exercise. You got some hips, glutes, core. Kind of been the theme of the week this week. Getting those hips and glutes in. 20 reps. And again, respect us, right? And know what we're doing. Not everybody has super heavy weights, but this is one of those you would have a nice weight progression in front of you to work with. And that right there slows you down. That big weight change is what's the biggest difference between being in here and being at home. When you are done with that second set of your left side push or pull, you're on your left hip glute for 20. It's okay if you're not there, but if you find yourself waiting for me, slow it down a touch. Right? I've got that rhythm in my head. Two and a half to three seconds. This exercise is Again, about a minute, maybe a little bit less because it's not the hardest thing in the world. Donkey kicks are a bigger motion than fire hydrants, and we're trying to get our hips and glutes. And those require a little bit of motion, a little bit of load, a little bit of focus, a little bit of breathing, a little bit of squeezing. Nice, good start to the Wednesday. You've already gotten up and worked a little bit. Now you get a little workout in, go back to work. Round three when you're ready. You're on your 20 pushing or pulling and then the 30 on your hips glutes. Now I don't mind if you go at your own pace and if you start getting way ahead, you literally need to be like, ooh, maybe I should slow down a little bit. But if you gotta go and you need to get ahead, cool. Just make sure you're doing your motion. Nice, good, steady motion. Five sets of 20, pushing or pulling, balance and stability. And remember, I'm not doing all the reps with you, but I do want to get enough reps so I have the rhythm in my head. Nice, good day today. Warm, sun's trying to come out. Alrighty, round three, if you're there, 30 fire hydrants or donkey kicks. And now remember, on our hip routines that we have done, we definitely do the other ones. This is geared to be hips and glutes, posterior hips and glutes. So it's not our hip day. Breathing, focusing, motion and load. round three. You definitely start to feel the burn on round three. Rounds one and two are going to turn it on, do it right, feel the motion, right? Do all those things. Slow it down. Enjoy the day. When you are done with that 30, you're on your fourth set of your push or pull. No rush. 
fourth set of push or pull when you're ready. If you're not there, I actually commend you on going slow. So don't stop doing what you're doing. If you've been a little bit ahead, slow down, do right. Maybe add a little weight if you can. If you can't, that's okay. Time under tension, one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. Steady. And of course, when you add stability and balance, that will slow you down naturally too. 20 for the fourth time this circuit. If you look at the last couple workouts, this one's definitely gonna feel like you got a lot done. Kind of like last Friday, we got a lot of those things done, but we repeated those similar movements. So it feels like we're doing a lot. Round four is 40 on your fire hydrants and donkey kicks. You did it on the right side, we're doing it on the left side. A lot of motion. And breathe. Breathe in, focus. Hips and glutes. Working that body. Hips and glutes. 40 is when, of course, the 30 is starting that burn. 40 is going to capitalize on that burn. You want to mix it up between the fire hydrant and donkey kick so you're getting your hips and glutes, not creating momentum, right? That's the hard part about the whole thing is slowing it down. But I actually want your glutes more than your hips, so that's the hard part. On hip day, I want your hips and not your glutes. What is it, Chris? What do you want? What are we doing? When you're ready, this is round five. If you're not there yet, cool. You know I'm going to later a little bit. Round five is your last of this push-pull. You have the last 50 on your hip glutes. And that'll be 100 each side done upper and 150 each side on your hips, glutes. We've already done our 60 abs. We're going to reverse the order to another 60 abs core. So there's your 120 reps on those. You have a nice, simple, but effective start to your day. So, of course, we're going to have a nice finish to our day. <clears throat> you know what happens when I do these kind of workouts? Because normally you're like, ooh, Chris, we're running out of time. Uh-huh. We have lots of time. Balance if you're doing your rows. Stability if you're doing your pushes. And again, they kind of do intertwine a little bit between activating your core, using those other things for stability, challenging yourself on the instability. After that fifth set of 20, if you're ready, and of course, we're probably close. Hopefully you're not been waiting too much. You got your 50 on your posterior hips, glutes, either fire hydrants or donkey kicks. If you felt like the pace was high, apologize. I don't ever want you trying to go faster. And that probably meant you had nice heavy load on your upper body and you put yourself in tough positions. So that, of course, takes a little longer. So I will send you a gold star in the mail. It'll get there sometime. There's your bad joke for the day. My bad jokes is decline because I don't see you guys as much. And I lose that opportunity to sneak in and, and get my little digs. But I can't pick on anybody right now, Clark. Right, Stella? So what are you going to pick on? <laughs> 50 on the posterior hip glutes. You know it takes a while. Let it burn. You've already done 100 reps leading into having that, right? Getting another 50 in there with 150 total reps on each side. We're going to have that 120 dynamic warm-up ab warm-up. We have the 100 right push, 100 left push pull. We have the 150 each side hips, glutes. We're going to reverse the order on the abs core. We need to do it slowly. We need to do it mindfully. 
And then we have a nice little finish. And you'll see you soon. When you're ready, you're going to start with your soup mix. And then we're going to go to the reverse crunches. And then we're going to go to the toe touches. We're just reversing the order. It is not magical, but it does finish harder than it started. Ten is the number. Soup mix. Ready, set, go. It's not a lot of motion. So make your muscles do the motion. Upper back, middle back, lower back, glutes, supermans. Make your muscles do the motion since it isn't a lot of motion. Sounds weird. Most people are like, I don't really feel supermans. There isn't a lot of motion, so make your muscles do it. Reverse crunches. Your legs are moving because of your abs. There is the isometric version. My body is up, my abs are contracted, and my legs are moving because of my abs. And then there's the, I don't want to say easier, but a little less contraction on your non-isometric reverse crunches. Your legs are still moving because of your abs, but I want you to focus no matter what. When you're done, your legs are up on your toe touches. Touch those toes. Or guess what? I can't touch my toes. Try to touch your toes on your 10 toe touches. And and those are, of course, burning and feeling good. Now we're going to go to those sit-ups, which you're already ab tired. You already got your uh, blah, blah, blah. abs all tired. Sit-ups, your knees are bent. Remember, leg straight sit-ups might feel easier because you can use your leg weights, right? Your legs are down. It's like a big wrench. Plus, you shorten your abs a little bit from the leg straight sit-ups. Ten sit-ups. Use your glutes as your center. That'll keep your body in one spot on your 10 sit-ups. And then you'll have your legs straight down for the last 10 sit-ups. And of course, your abs are tight. So these are going to feel easier than your knees than sit-ups, but they're going to feel harder than what you started with earlier. 10 legs straight down sit-ups. And you're thinking vertical motion and breathing on those 10 sit-ups. Oh, I love it when timing that workout works out great. Amazing. Amazing. Oh, I like it. You're going to breathe in, focus, and let you finish off for a second. Okay, there's no rush. You get a lot of work done. A little bit of variety, a little bit, right? So, the wall sit thing. I'm going to let you leave at any time. There is up to five one-minute wall sits, and you've got your five uh, sets of ten between them. Now, what are you doing on your ten? Well, you can really do anything, but I'm looking for jump squats or split jumps or pulsating squats or burpees. That might sound like the other day for a reason. You don't have to. One-minute wall sit, ten. One minute wall sit, 10. One, now, if you can leave any time, I'm gonna give you five rounds. Three rounds would put us at about four minutes. Five rounds puts us about eight minutes, give or take. So, when you're ready, we didn't do a lot of reps. One minute wall sit, no watching, definitely doing. Ready, set, go. Now, today I'm not gonna formally change your wall sit because of your optional combos. I hope you guys are doing your wall sit right now. One minute wall sit, and then you can either do 10 jump squats, 10 split squats, 10 burpees. If you need to, you can do 10 pulsating squats or 10 stationary reverse lunges. It's only 10. I want you back on the wall, I mean, no more than 30 seconds after the wall sit. So basically you have a one minute wall sit and then you're doing something, but I want you back on the wall sit and we start the wall sit every 90 seconds. So three rounds of this is four and a half minutes and five rounds of this is your eight, eight and a half minutes, okay? You can leave at any time. But homework would be to finish it off. Three, two, one, and relax. 10. You've got jump squats, you've got split jumps, you've got 
burpees, and you've got pulsating squats if you want them, and you have stationary reverse lunges, but only 10, and then you shake it off, and we're gonna get back on the wall. But I want that to be about a 30 second between do it, shake it, and get back on the wall. No rush. One minute. Ready, set, go. So yeah, it's not very long and the burn didn't go away. And of course each round it builds, but the one minute wall is short enough to survive it and the 10 reps is short enough to do it, but your repetitiveness is high. One minute wall set, 10 exertion, three rounds is my minimum, and five rounds would be the maximum. And again, I hope the pace today was good. I hope you didn't feel like I was too far ahead. And that was literally based on the weight you used on your pushing or pulling and the position you put your body in. If it's light and, and you're able to maintain position, it was quicker. If it was really heavy and you had a hard time in position, you might have felt like you got behind. So I'm hoping the little loitering was good. Three, two, one, relax. 10. Again, you can do anything. Burpees, jump squats, split jumps, right? Uh, pulsating squats, stationary reverse lunges. Only 10. Just enough to get the blood flowing. You get off the wall for about 30 seconds, and we're going to be back on the wall. And this will be our round three round, the minimum round, the round that Clark says, pace. Just kidding, Mark. Love you. Just kidding. Brian, on the other hand, got a little pinch on the other day, so I know he's staying. One minute. Ready, set, go. Stella's my perfect one. She does everything I ask all the time. Right, Stella? All right, boys, you hear, the, hear what's happening here? And then uh, Tom. I'm too busy, but Walsh said that answer you. I just was giving you props. You'll do anything I ask. <laughs> and my boy Tom, he's going to be sleepwalking in here at 5.30 in the morning. So he's, he's, I could give him anything and he just says, oh, you know, and I, I'll, I'll like put him in his position and then I'll have to do is push the start button. So it's pretty good. <laughs> I like it. Piper had to get back to her parenting teacher duties busy busy day we're in our last week of all the things and they threw out a bunch of random little kids tests for our little first graders crazy two one and relax ten this is the minimum round ten jump squats split jumps pulsating squats if you need stationary reverse lunges burpees right just enough movement to get the blood flowing and just enough time to get off the wall, and then you get back on the wall. Two more rounds if you want it. If you want to be done, you can be done. I'll let you be done now if you want to be done. All righty, here we go. Breathe. Ready, set, go. So each round, a little more burn. Maybe a little bit of heart rate. A little more burn. Maybe a little heart rate. A little more burn. Maybe a little heart rate. A little more burn. All right, that was the intent. Posterior hips and glutes done. We were ready for this circuit. You had your upper body balancing, stability, pushing, and pulling. We were ready for this circuit. You had your 120 abs core, right? We've been working up to this point today. You have a nice little movement, dynamic movement, ab core start. You were ready for this circuit. Three, two, one, and relax. And again, I hope you're burning. I am too. Either pulsating squats, jump squats, split jumps, burpees. Only 10. 
just enough to get the blood flowing, get off the wall. We only have one more to go. We didn't really do legs. This is legs with plyometric and isometric stuff, where we're not doing a lot of forward legs. Here we go. Last one. Ready? Set. Go. Again. Burn heart rate. Burn heart rate. Burn heart rate. Ready? So just slowly beginning up there. It's definitely the hardest thing we've done, but we progress to this point. Monday we have the time workout, the 10 rounds of pushing and pulling. You could have chosen upper and lower, hundreds of reps. You have the 300 ab core in between them. You have the 180 rep warm up on Monday. Uh, last Friday we had the, the wall sit leg plank ab times two. So we have this for eight minute warm up. You have the oblique agility. I mean, it's, it's been all over the place. We're good. We are good. Oh, it's the last one. You're on the home stretch in five, three, two, one, and breathe. One more, ten. Jump squats, split jumps, burpees, pulsating squats, stationary reverse lunges. Only ten. Always ten. That was a little hard finish after a pretty good day. That was workout 39, if I do recall, in the books. <laughs> if you can't walk to your iPad or computer, I didn't do my job. <laughs>